It's no mystery, when it comes to the strange and unusual, Gravity Falls has got you covered. The Pines family first stole our hearts in 2012 and managed to keep us on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of their mystery-filled journey. In fact, we here at Channel Frederator love the series so much that we've decided to revisit the series from the very beginning. And no, we're not talking about when Dipper and Mabel showed up, we're talking the very beginning. I'm Jacob, and join me as we go through the series in chronological order. The good, the bad, and especially especially the mysterious. 30 million BCE, a massive flying saucer crash lands on our planet, forming the Valley of Gravity Falls and making it a hub of weirdness throughout history. 1000 AD, the first human natives of Gravity Falls flee the land for unknown reasons, leaving behind a treasure trove of ancient artifacts. Many of the artifacts depict the likeness of a certain one-eyed triangle man. Eh, whatever, it's probably not important. 1837, Sir Lord Quentin Tremblay III Esquire is elected the eighth and a half president of the United States after winning the election in a literal landslide victory. He quickly becomes known as the country's silliest president, which is why you've never heard of him. 1842. Quentin Tremblay is kicked out of office and accidentally discovers the uncharted land of Gravity Falls after riding his horse backwards off a cliff. Quentin founds the settlement and deems himself mayor. 1862. Quentin Tremblay mysteriously disappears. The government initiates the Northwest cover-up and nominates local waste-shoveling village idiot Nathaniel Northwest to become the new town mayor in his stead. Northwest is also credited as the founder of Gravity Falls to further cover up Tremblay's existence. Late 1940s to the early 1950s. Twins Stanley and Stanford Pines are born in Glass Shard Beach, New Jersey to Phil Brick and Karen Pines. They're raised in the family pawn shop within the lead paint district of the city. Early 1960s. The two are an unstoppable pair with dreams of becoming full-time adventurers. Stanley develops a punch-first, ask-questions-later personality which pairs perfectly with Ford's mental brilliance. While exploring their hometown of Glass Shard Beach, they find remnants of an old ship in a nearby cave. They begin to rebuild it, dubbing the boat the Stana War, and plan to use it to sail around the world together as treasure hunters. 1970s. During their senior year of high school, Stan and Ford are called to the principal's office where they learn that Ford's science project has attracted the interest of West Coast Tech, a prestigious college. Ford is naturally excited about the opportunity, which upsets Stan since he's still holding on to their childhood dream of becoming treasure hunters. Frustrated over the idea of losing his brother, Stan accidentally damages Ford's science project, a perpetual motion machine, causing the project to malfunction and Ford to lose the opportunity of a lifetime. The two ultimately fall out, and Stan is kicked out of the family for losing them potential millions with Ford's inventions. Stan leaves home and starts his own business. Meanwhile, Ford enrolls in Backups More University to make up for his lost opportunity. 1972 to 1982, Stan's story. Stan founds Stanco Enterprises and tries to sell poorly made household appliances. These faulty appliances give Stan a bad rap as he's soon considered a con man and chased out of New Jersey. Unfortunately, this becomes an ongoing trend for Stan as a traveling salesman. He's eventually banned from 32 of the 50 states, and also he's been in prison in three different countries. 1972 to 1982, Ford's story. Meanwhile, Ford works twice as hard as any other student at Backups More University. He's accepted into the doctoral program three years ahead of schedule, writes a thesis that becomes nationally ranked, and receives an enormous grant for $100,000 to apply to his field of study. He decides to study the supernatural, and shortly after, moves to Gravity Falls the weirdness capital of the country. Immediately, Ford is entranced by his findings. He begins to keep a record of his supernatural discoveries in a special journal. Soon enough, he realizes he needs to expand his studies and create a safe space to contain his more dangerous experiments, among which are things like the shapeshifter. So he constructs an extra bunker hidden underground beneath the Gravity Falls forest with a secret entrance inside an artificial tree. After a while, Ford hits a roadblock in his study. That is, until he stumbles across a cave filled with ancient writing. There's a ritual circle with various symbols and zodiac signs, seemingly for some sort of prophecy. Ford translates the writing to discover these are incantations carved next to a description of a triangular man with one eye and a top hat. However, a warning is also written, begging that these incantations never be said aloud. Ford ignores the warnings and summons the mysterious being who appears in his dream that night and introduces himself as Bill Cipher. Bill explains that he's a muse and he chooses one brilliant mind to inspire every century. The two become friends and in exchange for his knowledge of the other side, Bill asks for use of Ford's body whenever he should please, and Ford agrees. Bill gifts Ford the blueprints to build a portal to another dimension. To build it, Ford enlists the help of his old college friend, Fiddleford McGucket, who's specializing in personalized computers at this time. Fiddleford moves to Gravity Falls and assists Ford in building the portal. Once the portal's complete, Fiddleford is accidentally sucked inside. Ford saves him just in time, but it's obvious Fiddleford is frightened by what he's seen on the other side. He tells Ford to beware the beast with one eye. 
eye and warns him that his device will undoubtedly bring about the end of times. Fiddleford leaves and invents the mind erase gun to help himself cope. He then founds a secret society called the Blind Eye where he and a group of other townsfolk are determined to help others forget their disturbing supernatural findings. However, his words, the beast with one eye, make Ford suspicious and he decides to confront Bill. When Bill admits his true plan is to merge both dimensions, Ford immediately shuts down the portal and begins taking precautions against Bill. He builds Project Mentum to encrypt his thoughts. He also begins to amend his previous journal entries with invisible ink, but that didn't seem like enough. So he abandons his research and hides his journals. He then converts his second underground bunker into a fallout shelter should the worst happen and reaches out to the only person he knows he can trust, his twin brother, Stan. Late 1982. Stan arrives in Gravity Falls to see his brother for the first time in almost a decade. A crazed Ford explains that he needs Stan to take Journal 1 as far away from Gravity Falls as possible and keep it hidden. Since this is the only reason Ford wanted to see his estranged brother, Stan becomes enraged and the two fight. Stan pushes Ford into the portal and accidentally activates it. He then watches as Ford disappears into the gateway, but right before Ford vanishes, he tosses the journal to Stan. Stan tries everything he can to reactivate the gateway, but nothing works. When he goes into town though, the townspeople think that he is actually Ford, you know, since they're twins. Stan runs with it and takes up his brother's identity, as well as the cabin he was living in. The townsfolk seem very curious about the cabin itself, so Stan turns this into his next big scam. He starts charging admission to the cabin, and thus, the Mystery Shack is born. August 31st, 1999. Finally, our protagonists, Mabel and Dipper Pines, are born in Piedmont, California. They're the grandchildren of Shermie Pines, Stan and Ford's younger brother. And now we arrive at the series itself. Hey, it's about time we got here. June 1st and 2nd, 2012. Tourist Trapped. Mabel and Dipper Pines arrive in Gravity Falls to spend the summer with their great uncle Stan, though the cool kids call him Grunkle Stan. He promptly puts them to work in the mystery shack. While posting signs in the woods, Dipper comes across a hollow tree. Inside, he finds an electronic device with one of its two wires severed. He fiddles with some switches, causing a trap door to open in the ground containing a mysterious journal marked 3. He opens the journal and sees it's filled with facts and notes about the town's strange supernatural anomalies. Meanwhile, Mabel announces she has a date, but her boyfriend Norman is actually a bunch of gnomes looking to take Mabel as their queen. Dipper rescues his sister, and the twins return to the mystery shack. June 3rd, 2012, Legend of the Gobblewonker. Grunkle Stan takes the twins fishing at Gravity Falls Lake, where a crazed hick the locals refer to as Old Man McGucket claims to have seen a lake monster. Once Seuss, the mystery shack handyman, arrives with his own boat, the twins decide to ditch their Grunkle's lame jokes and investigate. They discover that the lake monster is actually a mechanical creation of Old Man McGucket's. June 10th to 13th, 2012, The Hand That Rocks the Mabel. The twins learn that Grunkle Stan's biggest competition in town is an adorable little boy named Gideon Gleeful, aka Lil Gideon, a local psychic adored by all the townsfolk. Dipper and Mabel attend one of his shows to test his psychic abilities, and Dipper concludes that Gideon is nothing more than a con man, just like their grunkle. The next day, Gideon arrives at the shack to ask Mabel if she wants to come to his dressing room and try on some different makeup. The two become friends until he reveals he has a crush on her. The feeling isn't mutual, though, so they have a falling out, and Gideon swears revenge on the Pines family. Later that night, it's revealed that Gideon is in possession of Journal 2. June 17th, 2012, Irrational Treasure. It's Pioneer Day at Gravity Falls, and the twins uncover evidence that the town's founder, Nathaniel Northwest, is a hoax. They set out to uncover the truth, ultimately so they can rub it into the insanely wealthy and entitled Pacifica Northwest's face. She's the town's popular mean girl and a descendant of the supposed founder. While following a set of clues, they discover the government's Northwest cover-up, along with the original mayor, Quentin Tremblay, preserved in peanut brittle. Turns out Tremblay disappeared because he wanted to demonstrate Peanut Brittle's life-sustaining properties. June 18th, 2012, The Time Traveler's Pig. Grunkle Stan throws a mystery fair where Mabel wins a pig by correctly guessing its weight. She names him Waddles and makes him her new best friend. Shortly after, the twins run into Blendon Blandon, a time traveler on a mission to clean up disturbances on the timeline. They take the time machine and go back in time, which results in Blendon getting arrested by the Time Paradox Avoidance Enforcement Squadron. While apprehended, he swears to get revenge on the twins. June 20th, 2012, Little Dipper. Gideon attempts to exact revenge on the Pines by taking ownership of the Mystery Shack, but Grunkle Stan outcons the little con man. Gideon later reveals that he doesn't just want the shack, he wants something hidden on the property. July to August 2012, Dreamscaperers. Gideon summons Bill Cipher to make a deal. He requests that Bill retrieve the combination to Stan's secret safe so he can steal the deed to the shack. Dipper, Mabel, and Seuss witness the demon enter Stan's mind. To save Stan, they use Journal 3 to find the necessary incantations to follow Bill into Stan's mind. They face
face off against Bill and return to reality with their Grunkle safe, but Gideon manages to break into the safe using dynamite. He steals the lease and kicks the Pines family out. Gideon rises. The Pines family are living with Seuss and his grandma, Abuelita, which is less than glamorous. It's no mystery shack. Gideon reveals that his true plan is to find the first journal on the property. Dipper and Mabel seek out the gnomes from the first episode for help, but Gideon turns the gnomes against the twins. With the help of his gnome allies, Gideon retrieves journal three from Dipper. Afterwards, Dipper gives up and the twins board a bus back to California. That's when Gideon realizes the journal he retrieved from Dipper is actually journal three, not one. He thought there were only two. He chases the bus they were on back into Gravity Falls with his Gideon bot, built by McGucket of course, and faces off against the twins. The townsfolk arrive ready to arrest the twins for harming Gideon, but before they do, Stan reveals that the free Gideon pins everyone received were actually cameras he used to spy on them. Gideon gets arrested and the Pines family gets their shack back. Dipper tells Stan about the journals and Stan, up to this point playing dumb about all the weirdness of Gravity Falls to the kids, takes the third one from Dipper, claiming he wants to borrow it for inspiration for the shack. That night, Stan sneaks into his secret room behind the vending machine, which takes him down to Ford's old lab. Stan is now in possession of all three journals. Cut to black, season one over. Scary Oki. Stan continues working hard on the portal, but it attracts the attention of some government agents who begin to snoop around. The Pines family prepares for their grand reopening party, but then Dipper accidentally raises the dead. It happens. The agents run off and the zombies attack the shack. After Stan tells Dipper that he's known about the strangeness of gravity falls all along, he, Mabel, and Dipper destroy the zombies after discovering their weakness is very loud karaoke music. Into the bunker. Dipper, Mabel, Seuss, and Wendy follow the journal to a secret bunker hidden in the woods, right under the hollow tree where Dipper originally found the journal. Inside, they battle a shapeshifter that has escaped its cage. On their way out, Seuss finds a briefcase he took from the lab is actually an old laptop belonging to someone identified as F. Society of the Blind Eye. Dipper discovers the laptop is marked McGucket Lab, so they rush to crazy old man McGucket's junkyard to confront him. Unfortunately, McGucket claims that he's had amnesia since 1982. They read about the Society of the Blind Eye in the journal and conclude that McGucket must have had his mind erased after witnessing something. Based on a few clues and what McGucket can remember, they're led to the Society's secret headquarters, where they discover a persistent initiative to erase the townsfolk's memories. The gang retrieves the mind erased gun and uses it to erase the cult's memory. They also find McGucket's old memory tube and discover McGucket is the founder of the Blind Eye Society and that the laptop was his. Not only that, he was in Gravity Falls assisting the journal's author in a groundbreaking experiment that disturbed him so deeply he began erasing his own memory to the point of deterioration. Not what he seems. Stan continues to secretly work on the portal, but government agents arrive again to take him into custody for stealing drums of toxic chemicals. Dipper and Mabel attempt to clear his name with security footage, only to discover that he is in fact guilty. They also discover the lab, along with the portal, and all three journals. Dipper scans the journals with a black light to reveal a secret message about the portal, that it could destroy the entire universe. Stan escapes custody and runs back to the shack, only to be confronted by the twins in the lab. Dipper activates the manual override and threatens to shut the portal down. As the room loses gravity, everyone is lifted into the air, but Mabel manages to grab the override button. Stan begs Mabel not to push it, but Dipper tells her to press it, since Stan has been lying to them this whole time about his true intentions. As the countdown nears its end, Mabel decides to trust her grunkle, and when the timer runs out, the portal is activated and a mysterious figure appears. A Tale of Two Stands. The twins learn of their second grunkle, Ford, the long sought out author of the journals. Ford and Stan tell the twins of their falling out, recalling the events that have led up to now and why Stan was posing as Ford this entire time. The government agents arrive again to take Stan back into custody, but Dipper uses McGucket's mind erase gun to clear their memories. The Last Mablecorn. Bill appears to Ford in a dream and tells him he knows about the interdimensional rift that that was created when the portal was reactivated. So Ford dismantles the portal, contains the rift, and warns his family to protect the shack. If Bill gets his hands on the portal or rift, he can open the doorway to his dimension and unleash chaos. At this point, the twins have had more than a few run-ins with Bill Cipher, so they know that this isn't a threat to take lightly. Luckily, Ford knows a way to shield the shack from Bill, but it requires unicorn hair. So Mabel volunteers to retrieve it along with her friends, Wendy, Candy, and Grenda. Meanwhile, Ford formulates a backup plan to protect their minds using Project Med him. Dipper uses the device to encrypt his thoughts while Ford naps, but his curiosity leads him to place the helmet on Ford's head. Dipper uncovers memories of the deal between Ford and Bill, which makes him believe that they're still working together. He threatens to erase Ford's mind, thinking that Bill is actually in possession of his body, but Ford assures Dipper it's okay and tells him
reminiscent of what happened between him and Bill all those years ago. Mabel and the girls finally return with the magical hair after a nasty altercation with the unicorns and use it to set up the shield. Dipper and Mabel versus the future. Mabel begins planning for her and Dipper's big 13th birthday party while Dipper ventures out with Ford to fix the cracking interdimensional rift. They travel down to Crash Site Omega, where the ancient alien ship crash landed, to find an alien adhesive to patch the rift. On their search, Ford offers Dipper an apprenticeship and asks that he stay in Gravity Falls after the summer is over. Dipper excitedly accepts, but unbeknownst to him, Mabel overheard the agreement over their shared walkie-talkies. Dipper excitedly returns home to tell Mabel about the offer, but she tells him how upset losing him would be when she has to go back to school without him. After an emotionally charged exchange, she grabs her backpack and runs into the woods in a huff. Suddenly, Blendon Blandon appears and offers to extend summer for her forever so she never has to leave. All he wants in return is the interdimensional rift, which just so happens to be in the backpack that she grabbed. It turns out she grabbed Dipper's bag by mistake. She makes the deal with Blendon and to her dismay, realizes he was possessed by Bill the whole time. Bill then destroys the rift, unleashing his world upon ours. Weird Mageddon parts one through three. Bill's nightmare realm has taken over Gravity Falls. Dipper and Ford find themselves in a race against time to defeat Bill before his weirdness spreads across the entire world. Bill manages to capture Ford and burn the three journals, but Dipper escapes before he can do any more damage. Elsewhere, Gideon, who's been in a maximum security prison since season one, breaks free during the madness and races to save Bill. Dipper travels to the mall where he reunites with Wendy, and the two decide to go after Mabel. However, Gideon and his gang of discount auto warriors intervene. Gideon places them under arrest, and the two groups fight wheel to wheel in a Mad Max style race. Gideon catches our heroes, but sets them free when Dipper calls him out on all the horrible things he's done and why Mabel will never love him back. Now free Freed from Gideon's grasp, Seuss, Dipper, and Wendy travel to Mabel's prison to help her escape, but once inside, they realize it's less of a prison and more of a cute fantasy land, dubbed Mabel Land. The land is designed to lull its prisoners into a false sense of security by giving them exactly what they desire most. Dipper is left alone to rescue Mabel, but once he finds her, she tells him that she doesn't want to leave. Mabel arranges a trial for Dipper to state his case, and Dipper convinces her that while reality can be disappointing, no matter what happens, they have each other. Dipper assures Mabel that he'll never leave her side and they finally escape Mabel Land together. After reuniting with Wendy and Seuss, they head back to the Mystery Shack. The barrier Ford placed on the shack has protected it during the frenzy, making it a safe haven for locals and mystical creatures alike. Dipper convinces Stan and the refugees that they have to rescue Ford in order to defeat Bill. Meanwhile, Bill realizes he can't expand his weirdness barrier beyond Gravity Falls, so he unfreezes Ford for answers. Ford claims it's due to the natural weirdness magnetism in Gravity Falls caused by the alien ship. There is a way to break through but he'll never tell him, of course. Meanwhile, McGucket has converted the shack into a giant battle mech of sorts, and they head toward Bill's Pyramid to face him. Once inside, the refugees battle it out with Bill's henchmen. He freezes Ford once more and attacks the shack, but can't break through the unicorn barrier. The newly dubbed Shackatron rips Bill's eye out, causing him to take some time to regenerate. Mabel grabs the Ford statue, and Gideon tells her how to unfreeze all of the frozen townsfolk. All the townsfolk are changed back to normal, including Ford. Ford then grabs a can of blue spray paint and begins to paint the Zodiac on the ground, including all ten symbols that represent ten of the characters there today. It's all a part of the prophecy he discovered years ago that was carved into the wall of the ancient natives. They all stand on their respective symbols and hold hands to create a ring of energy around the Zodiac. Stan refuses to complete the circle, though, until Ford thanks him for bringing him back to this realm. Ford eventually does thank him, but considering the circumstance, it's kind of forced. Unfortunately, the tension between the brothers runs too high and a fight breaks out between the two. As a result, the barrier is broken, and Bill returns. Bill burns the Zodiac away, captures Stan and Ford, and chases the twins throughout the pyramid. Inside their cage, Stan and Ford lament over their fighting. Ford decides to let Bill inside his mind to learn how to escape Gravity Falls so the twins can be saved. Bill happily enters his mindscape, only to discover that, oh, it's not Ford's mind, it's Stan's. He disguised himself in order for Ford to erase his memory with Bill inside. Ford destroys Bill, and the portal to the Nightmare Realm closes. August 31st, 2012. Gravity Falls is back to normal, or as normal as it can be, including Stan, who took a little time to regain his memory after having it wiped by Ford. The entire town gets together for Dipper and Mabel's 13th birthday, Ford and Stan make up, and Ford asks Stan to accompany him on an adventure to investigate anomalies out in the Arctic Ocean and finally live out their childhood dream. Stan agrees and promotes Seuss to the manager of the Mystery Shack, and Abuelita moves in immediately. September 1st, 2012 and onwards. At some point in the near future, Future, Stan and Ford are adventuring into the Arctic Sea aboard the Stan-O-War 2, and Seuss runs the Mystery Shack. The Northwests lose their 
mansion due to a risky investment in weirdness bonds and McGucken moves in instead, and the twins say their goodbyes and head back to Piedmont, California, ending the greatest summer of their lives. <sighs> Mystery solved. Thanks for watching our Gravity Falls timeline video. Share your thoughts with us in the comments below and be sure to give this video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to channel Frederator for all sorts of awesome videos like this one. And of course, remember, Frederator loves you.